In this video, I will show you the 11 principles you need to know about to start learning and using UE5 as a complete beginner. I will outline how to begin learning UE5 so you can have a good foundation to build on. This way you can begin using UE5 rather than being overwhelmed by it. And I'll tell you how to kind of wrap your head around some of the learning principles of what you should focus on first, what UE5 really is to get a better understanding of the engine, and how to approach learning and using UE5 without getting frustrated by it. So let's get into the 11 principles. The first principle is to decide what do you want out of UE5. One thing you have to understand about Unreal Engine 5, it is the complete game engine. It's used across multiple industries such as video games, for film, television, architecture, broadcast, live events, training simulation, automotive and transportation. And because of this, you'll never master every aspect of the engine. You just simply don't have enough time for that. So you need to narrow your focus decide what you want from UE5. Why do you want to learn it? And what do you want to create with it? And the easiest way to figure that out is to pick one industry that you want to go into and create for. So do you want to use UE5 for video games, for film, for television, architecture, for broadcast, to create live events, for training and simulation, or for automotive and transportation? By narrowing down to just one on this list, this will help you focus on learning the industry pipeline to what you need to know to get out of UE5 to create faster. Now, there is, of course, a lot of overlap between some of these industries and between the use of UE5. By picking one and then focusing on that first, you'll be able to cross over to other ones later. Number two is you need to understand that UE5 is a collection of editors and plugins. This is the simplest way to think of Unreal Engine in order to wrap your head around it. U5 has a lot of editors, a lot of modes, plugins out of the box. Many of these require separate tutorial courses to cover the complexity and the depth of what it can do to help you create with UE5. And here is a list of some common editors and modes that are enabled inside UE5. I'm not going to read through them all, but you can see there's a lot here. And it would take you weeks and often months to just use one type of editor and get everything out of it. And this list doesn't even include hundreds of plugins available in UE5. And some of them are enabled at a project start and many can be enabled by going to edit plugins. And you can see here how many different plugins are available when you create your first project. And you can even download custom plugins created by others to extend the functionality of UE5. So no wonder once you start learning UE5, you open the Pandora's box and you feel more confused and overwhelmed than before. But the important thing is you do not need to learn them all. Many of these you will use on a daily basis, but many others you will never even need to use them. And take UE5 creation and learn each editor as you need for the project that you're working on. Number three, most common UE5 terms you need to know about. You will hear a lot of different terms being used as you work and learn UE5. And here are some of the common ones you'll encounter as you begin using UE5. Project. Project contains and organizes the content of your game or environment within a specific folder directory. You have to have a project created in order for you to launch UE5 editor. And everything you work on is contained within this project. Blueprint. Blueprint is a visual scripting system that can be used to create gameplay for your game right inside the editor. So no programming knowledge is required. And blueprints can be created right inside the content browser. And then you can open up these blueprints and begin scripting the behavior of your game and of your environment. Static Mesh. Static Mesh is a 3D model created inside a modeling package such as Maya, Blender, 3ds Max, and some others, and then import it into UE5. You can also use the modeling mode in UE5 to create static meshes. An asset. An asset refers to things like textures, materials, blueprints, static meshes. Usually anything found inside the content browser is considered an asset. An actor. An actor refers to any object within a level. This can include lights, static meshes, blueprints, player starts, etc. So whenever you are working inside the level using the perspective viewport or orthographic viewports and you are creating your level, your world, everything inside this level is an actor. 
a level or a map. Both of these terms, level or map, is used interchangeably. And a level refers to a collection of static meshes, lights, blueprints, particles, and more, where the player will play or the viewer will see. And your game, if you're creating a game, will often consist of multiple levels or maps used together to create a cohesive storyline and a beginning, middle, and an end. Or if you're creating a standalone game environment that's just an environment by itself, you will use a level to contain all of these different assets to create your world. Number four, everything in UE5 is contained within a project. Before you can launch the editor and work on creating your game environment or your game, you have to create a project. A project will contain and organize the content of your game or your environment within a specific folder directory. Once you have a project created, you can reopen the project to continue working on your game or environment. And to create a project is very simple. You launch the UE5 version installed on your computer, then go through the menus to select the various project templates and some of the settings for that project, or you can start a blank project. Set up the name, directory where that folder will be stored for your project, and then create it in order to launch UE5 Editor. Number five, start with UE5 project game templates. So when you're ready to begin a project, you simply launch the whatever version of the editor you have installed in order to open Unreal Project Browser. And then begin with one of the templates here. I'm gonna go, just go through the games template. And I recommend that you begin with one of the project game templates here. First person, third person, top down, or some other ones. This will give you the basic gameplay mechanics to use with your project and begin prototyping. You could also reverse engineer the mechanics for learning and building onto the existing functionality of the game template by adding your own changes. So this gives you the blueprints and all the necessary mechanics that you need to start with. If you begin with a blank project, you'll have to script those yourself. So with your first project, I recommend using one of these so you have something to work with and to begin prototyping. Then once you've selected the game template, so let's say I'm gonna use third person, choose Blueprint instead of C++. Blueprint is the visual scripting language in UE5 and it does not require any programming knowledge. If you choose C++, then you'll have to download some extra compilers as well as know how to program with C++. So Blueprint is a great starting point rather than having programming knowledge ahead of time. And then I recommend that you include stutter content. This gives you a folder with static meshes, with textures, with materials, some particle effects, some blueprints, so you can begin to use them to create with, as well as take a look at how they were created in order to learn from them. Number six, what does a standard level contain in UE5? A standard level should contain the following actors. Most of these, but not all, are included in the basic map template when you go to File, New Level, and choose the basic map template. These standard actors should be Directional light, this is your sunlight A skylight, this is your lighting actor that illuminates into the indirectly lit areas of your environment where the shadows are Sky atmosphere, this is atmospheric effect of the environment as well as it provides the sky dome that you see inside the map but not the clouds, those are a separate actor Then you should have exponential height fog that will give you fog within the environment. Volumetric clouds, this is optional, but this will give you the volumetric clouds you see inside the basic map te template. Then you will also have static meshes. In this case, the only static mesh here is the ground plane. And again, a static mesh is a 3D model, and most of your environment created will be using static meshes to create the world. Then you need materials that are applied onto those static meshes. So for example, just really quick, I'm gonna go to start content, and to props and just drag one of these static meshes in here here's a chair and this chair has a material applied for the color and some of the surface properties that you will see applied on the static mesh so it looks like metal or wood or concrete or whatever else then you will also need two other additional actors that are not included inside and that is a post process volume and a player start so post process volume will be found under visual effects and this is a very important actor that determines the visuals of your environment. But also it controls some other many important properties for how your level will look. So you should always have a post-process volume inside your map in order to control those visuals of your level. 
including auto exposure or eye adaptation, affect that happens inside your map. And you also should have a player start. Player start will spawn you inside the map from that location. And to find player start and insert it into your map, it'll be found under basic and player start. So now if I spawn inside the map, I will be spawned from that location instead of just randomly being dropped where the camera is. And this is especially important if you have a game created so you need to spawn the player from a specific area in the world. And this place actor panel is usually turned off by default and you can always find it and have it available by going to window place actors. So these will give you enough to start with to create your environments. But there are many other actors you will need to include to complete your world, such as point lights, spotlights, landscape, particle effects, audio, blueprints, water, and animations. And there are many more. But the ones listed here are an excellent start and will give you enough to begin creating. Number seven, do not make a game or a custom game environment as your first project. I know it will be very tempting to create your own custom game or a custom game environment, but do not. There are way too many moving parts and requires many different skills to possess to execute a game or a custom game environment. You have to manage programming, modeling, lighting, texturing, material creation, animation, effects, and many more. And you will simply become overwhelmed and frustrated before you even get a chance to learn the editor. Number eight. So what should your first project be in UE5? You want to start with a simple, small environment project using only starter content. Most importantly, something you can start and finish while learning UE5. The goal is to learn Unreal Engine Editor and its tools. So first recommended project for all beginners is to create a small environment, such as a single room, a hallway or exterior area with only starter content. The starter content folder can be added during the project creation screen, just like I showed you, or you can include it into an existing project if you didn't add it at the project creation screen by going to add, add feature or content pack, switch over to content and add starter content here, add to project. And within the starter content, you will be given different static meshes, audio files, blueprints, some HDRIs, example maps, materials, particles, textures, props, static meshes to create something with. Now these are very limited and you don't have a lot and there's no theme to them, but they are enough to start to create with very quickly because your goal when you launch UE5 for the very first time is to begin creating while you learn. And you definitely don't want to use anything outside that you have to create and import or have to deal with anything other than just learning the engine. That's your goal. And then once you've done that, then you can go ahead and get some stuff from the marketplace or use Quixel Bridge or maybe begin creating your own assets to import and use. Number nine, learn UE5 modeling mode. UE5 now comes with a modeling mode that allows you to create custom static meshes, 3D models, right inside the editor. Modeling mode can be used for creating new static mesh assets or modifying existing static mesh assets. Now, this modeling mode will not be replacing 3D modeling software such as Maya, Blender, 3ds Max, and others, but it is a great tool to know for how to use UE5. Modeling mode will already be enabled for you if you created a UE5 project. And you can access it by using this drop down menu right at the very top left and switching over to modeling mode, shortcut shift five. This will give you the modeling mode tools to create or modify existing static meshes. And then to turn this off, you simply go to selection, which is your regular mode for placing and working and moving things around the editor. Now on the off chance, the modeling mode isn't enabled by default. You would have to go to edit plugins and type in modeling. And this is the one you want to enable, Modeling Tool, Editor Mode. Once you have this checked on, it will enable a restart of the editor. And once you restart, you will be able to access this modeling mode. Now, the modeling mode has a lot of tools that you're not going to learn just simply by messing around with it. Especially if you've never done any 3D modeling using another 3D modeling software. But in Module 2 of the UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, we spent three plus hours going over how to use the modeling mode. 
So if you want to learn how to use this model mode to create your own custom static meshes or modify existing meshes, then download the UEFI Fundamentals Volume 1 tutorial course I created. Number 10, importance of building environments to scale. Number one mistake beginners make when they create environments is creating environments that are either too small or too big, wrong scale, and proportions are off. So here are some important dimension measurements you need to know about when creating in UE5. Unreal Engine 5 uses centimeters as the measurement system, and UE5 calls this Unreal Units. One Unreal Unit equals one centimeter, and the standard character height in UE5 is 180 Unreal Units, which is about roughly six feet. If you included a third person game template, you will have a few mannequins or player reference scales to use to insert into your environment, into your game, to judge scale and proportion of the environment. By going to characters, folder inside the content browser, you'll have UE4 mannequin and the UE5 mannequins. Inside the UE4 mannequin folder, and then inside meshes, you'll have the SK underscore mannequin to use. So you just simply left click, hold and drag to insert into the map. And then in the other folder, inside the mannequins, inside meshes, you will have SK mannequin, which is going to be SKM many, many simple, Quinn and Quinn simple. These four right here. And you can actually use this one as well. So you can actually drag that one or any of these four. So if you just select them all and drag them into your map, of course, you just want to only select one, not all four at the same time. But just to show you, you have variety for which one you would want to use for your scale reference to judge proportion of the environments you create. And all of these give you very accurate dimensions of the player character in game and the height of 180 Unreal units to help you judge proportion. If you didn't include a third person game template, you can add it into an existing project in order to get access to these by going to add, add feature or content pack, choose blueprint, then select third person and then add it into a project. There are a few other ways you can do so by inserting a custom character mesh or downloading some from the marketplace content from Epic Games Launcher. And these are extremely important and I use them in every project and in every environment I create. Number 11, beginner roadmap to learn UE5. So your first goal as a beginner is to learn how to use the UE5 editor and its tools. You want to stay entirely inside UE5 game engine and avoid introducing any external software such as Blender, Maya, Houdini, Substance Painter or Designer. Focus on learning UE5. And here's the best way to learn the engine as a complete beginner. First, focus on the essentials of the engine, such as editor's interface, viewport navigation, using different viewport modes, project management, using the content browser, working with objects in the editor, and creating very simple levels using starter content. Second, you need to learn how environments are constructed in UE5 and how to use existing assets in UE5 to create your own environments. This includes using static meshes or 3D models and how to work with materials and textures. Third, learn the modeling mode to create your own custom static meshes right inside the editor. Fourth, learn essentials of lighting and how to light exteriors and interiors with UE5. And fifth, learn how to use atmospheric effects such as fog, sky atmosphere, using particle effects, adding audio, and how to use the post-process volume to control the visuals of your environment. Once you are able to create your own environments following these five steps, you will be in a very strong position to take UE5 in any direction you want. And I will teach you Unreal Engine 5 as a complete beginner with zero knowledge of the engine and without any prior experience. I will guide you through every single one of these five steps of learning UE5 in the UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1 tutorial course. It has 40 videos, 11 plus hours, and by the end of it, you will learn how to start using UE5 to create with. You can download this UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1 course right now by using the link in the description box. And if you're watching this video on worldoflevelddesign.com blog post, there'll be a link in there for you as well.